It's great to be here with you. Uh, did you know that individual investors almost always lose money? And that's why I'm here today to share a story with you, and it's about how people understand the psychology of investing and how this knowledge accelerated with the huge advent of big data. So first of all, let me tell you a few words about myself. And uh, I started my journey into the investor's mind uh, in software as I was primarily interested uh, in hacking, not with uh, economics. And I, I, I spent countless hours experimenting with uh, very complex security systems. And I could easily outfox them, uh, gain advantage, and you know I did it for a great fun and because of the great curiosity and uh, challenge. But over time, I advanced and I thought about moving into the bigger game, which is the stock market. So. Yeah, oh, I need my presenter. So uh, when you start trading, you quickly realize that uh, the amount of information that is available is great, it's huge, and it's big, and you are unprepared for it. So on average, even if you are a super fast reader, you need four minutes to read and understand an article, right? So. And if you trade one company, you need to follow all the news about this company, news about the related company, uh, news from the same sector, political news, macro news, and sometimes even news from the markets abroad. So it's a huge amount of data. So yeah, but even if you manage to do everything properly, you'll quickly learn that it's very hard to be successful in the stock market. And most people will will fail. So with passion, similar to hacking, I've studied and learned plenty of theories, models, and well, ideas how to trade, how to uh, earn money on the stock market. But you know, uh, uh, frankly speaking, I, I wasn't successful. And I kept asking myself, what am I doing wrong? Why is that the models I create don't work? Well. <laughs> As a result, uh, I checked all the models, and as many of you remember from the uh, classical and neoclassical economics, decisions are made on the information and cost-benefit analysis, right? So it has nothing to do with the behavioral side. And to simply put it in words, we are, we are not robots. We don't know what to do during market panics or bubbles. Sometimes we get overexcited or you know, overly optimistic. So that's the problem, and that's why we started here. That's our university data center, Building Z, and that's me. Uh, we started to analyze cognitive biases and how how decision influence how how emotions influence decision making. And although we've been very successful with uh, individual studies, uh, we moved. I, I, we saw that this is not enough to understand the whole complex world of finance. And luckily, I met a team of geniuses uh, of uh, finance uh, markets and computer geniuses and psychology as well. And uh, those go, uh, we are called market psych. And we had this different approach. And the problem at that time was how to measure the emotions, not of the individuals, but the whole. For example, how would you measure? Uh, innovation, love, joy, optimism of the whole industry, or maybe a city, of a country. How would you do it? It's not that easy, yeah. So uh, we started to think about it that we can probably read what others read, and that's obviously internet. So all the professional news, and here in this example, they are mainly uh, news related to economy and politics. And although uh, this is, of course, not enough, because now you know we use a lot of uh, social media, so we started to read the data. And um, the server farm we saw at the beginning, uh, it's uh, similar to ours. We use up to 3,000 machines to constantly read the news from the internet. And once we read them, 
and the number is still easy to remember because it's again three, but three million messages daily with 3,000 machines. And we read this data and we are able to understand what is the news about. So we see the emotions coming from the news feed. And that gives us the idea how to approximate how people might feel. Okay? So uh, I have some data samples here. Uh, I want to share it with you. Some of them are scientific, some of them are not. So let me start with a very short question. What do you think? Which month is the angriest one? As expressed in the social media, when people are most angry on their Twitter or in news. Ideas? January, said January. Another idea? July, let's start with the first answer. Oh, actually it's September, I guess it's not, it's that people don't like very much the end of holidays, so, uh, and, and I'll tell you how it works. So every dot here represents one month. So I took all the Januarys, put them in this bin, and so on. And uh, a vertical line is the mean of the sample. So in the sample we saw here, September. So next question, please. Which month you think is the most joyful? July. December. January. December. Wow. Good. That's December. Yeah. So the amount of positive information shared in media and news is the highest December. Perfect. Okay. Okay, let's move on to something slightly more complicated. Uh, that's the another study I did. I, it was just out of curiosity. It's not very serious science, but I loaded around 2,100 messages from social media, and I was looking for sentences where where people they give advice. They tell you what to do. For example, they say, "Oh, Apple is going up tomorrow," or "Buy Microsoft." So I checked it, and in a, uh, the sample was uh, divided. It was quite equal, and Every time people say price will go up, in 60% cases, they were wrong. So actually, I checked the other side. They said, okay, wow, tomorrow the price will go down. So yeah, beware, sell now. And uh, I checked again, I connected the prices, checked the returns, and I said, wow, you're wrong again in most cases. So the knowledge for you from this is that Next time you hear someone giving you advice, what to buy and what to sell, and you might think, okay, just I'll just use this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, a, a little bit more serious example now. Here, um, I want to show you how uh, big data and text mining can help you to understand and be very uh, get in touch with the with the news. Here in this example, the red the red hour shows. Red Hour Arrow shows that we've uh, we've collected the data from the farmers riding on the tractors and tweeting that the corn is not you know best condition ever. So we, we, we saw it. Then a few days later we saw in news that they started the discussion about the weather damage. And you know what happened? A few days later, uh, journalists started discussion about corn price and rising of this price. So eventually you can see the, the, the yellow, that's the actual price. So actually, we've been able to see uh, the pattern. We've been able to see that the next news will bring some ch changes. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we can not only look at corn or you know, good and bad days and fun and anger. We can also look what is the main driver of a given stocks and indices. And in this example, I prepared an apple for you, and uh, here the main driver of Apple stock is joy, joy expressed by fanboys of Apple. So it, when they are optimistic about Apple, then the price goes up. And as you can see, uh, the green shaded area means that uh, a long-term joy is accelerating. When it's declining, the red uh, shaded area, then the joy is declining and the price goes down. So. This is quite a new approach. We are able to see something, not only the prices, something which is normally hidden, something which is behind the scenes. 
And yeah, oh, that's the whole market approximation, S&P 500. So uh, you can see that here the main driver is trust. And again, it's uh, when the long-term uh, trust is below short-term, then the market is declining, and the opposite. So the more trust, the better to buy. Okay, let's move on to something else. We can also not only track stocks, indices, and so on, but you can also look at the countries. So in this example, I prepared a slide for you with the, it's very recent, it, it's like six hours old. And um, it, it, this is the amount of sentiment. Sentiment means that it's the total amount of positive minus negative information. So it's uh, the more red is the, 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 the area, then it means the more uh, negative information they send, and the opposite. So it's great to be very green. And as you can see, this is consistent with the news. And Ukraine, Russia, now we know that there is a conflict. So we, we can see that the amount of information coming from that countries, those countries also, both from uh, social media news, they are not overall optimistic, but the total is pessimistic. As you can see, Poland is slightly shaded. It's not, uh, it's quite neutral, so that's good. And there are some countries that are very optimistic, like you can see, for example, Canada, and a few more, yeah. So that gives you an idea, and you can quickly monitor and look for the risk and scan the whole world to see whether there is some damage or you know, problems approaching. Okay, now, before we start, I'll tell you how it works. Uh, we have some countries here. I prepare like one, two, three, four, five countries. And uh, we'll, see on the, we'll see on the line here that the dates will move, and we'll see how the situation changed. Here we have, on the y-axis, we have joy. On the x-axis, we have unemployment. This is not unemployment, but it's how people are worried about unemployment, how they discuss it, and so on. And joy are the total expressions of joy in the media. So let's begin, and I want, to ask, I want to ask you a question. How do you think which country will end up with the highest joy? Think about it, and let's start. Okay, so at the beginning, Germany is with the high unemployment, United States and Italy, high on joy, and Spain joins them. Wow, that's a lot of fun. Poland is undecided whether to go to high unemployment or go to Spain, but look, no, 2005, 2006, Germany is a little bit solving their unemployment problem, and now Poland is facing the same problems for Germany. Italy is super high joy, Spain, as you know, the unemployment problem at the, at the end, and then Poland is approaching the high, very high joy levels, and now that's, that's the end. Italy number one, and Poland with the highest joy, so we have more joyful media and social media than United States, Germany, and Spain. So oh, I guess it's great to be here right now. Okay? So, so uh, as, you s as you can see, we, uh, we've been able to connect psychology and uh, economy on a scale never seen before. And uh, we did it using huge computing power and big data. And going back to the hacking terminology, this is how this is how you break into the global brain system. So I want you to I want you to ask uh, yourself one question. Uh, next time when you have to make a an investment decision, think about it, whether you can afford to make an, a decision without knowing the psychology of investing. Thanks.